Like any developing program, uh, Nomad has now the ability to allow you to make your own brushes and you can even sell those brushes because you can export them as a pack and let other people buy your specifically targeted brushes or specifically created brushes. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you how to make your own, how to make icons for them, and then you can start exploring and, and getting some really creative brushes that work just for your own needs and for other people if you want to share things. So let's start with the basics. We'll start with the sphere and we will literally, um, we'll validate it from the top and we'll just take a look at the brushes here. And you'll probably, if you're familiar with um, uh, Nomad in any way, you'll, you'll be familiar with the brushes down the side here. If you're not, basically, these are a set of brushes. They, they come, everything, everything down to these circles at the bottom with the brown background comes with um, Nomad as default. Now, what I'm gonna do for you, just so that you can see it a little bit easier, is I'm just gonna increase the overall scale of the whole interface. So obviously I don't work like this, but it just makes it easier for me while I'm, I'm training you on, on this, you know, on this specific video. So what we're going to do, first of all, with any brush, we, we, we want to um, work on a high res model. So that, that's that's very, very simple. So if you put the wireframe on, it's fairly low res. So let's come up here. We'll come to our multi res and we'll just subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. We'll take it up to like a million and a half. Well, more, actually, we'll take it up to something ridiculous like four million just so that I can show you a really high res model um, uh, and then any brush that we work with is going to be shown on this model here so the the essence of how to make a brush is this you can take any of the brushes that comes default with um, Nomad so for example a common one would be clay you can tap on it singly and you get these options here so you've got save clone last save icon and reset and we're only going to focus on a couple so save will come at the end so when you've finished your brush and you've made your brush you want to be saving it and naming it for your own convention so we'll work on that last clone is the big one and when i hit clone that's going to um, create a, a, a new brush down here at the bottom last save is a way to load your last used brush Icon is where we go in and we can then import our icon, which gives you these kind of uh, looking things down here. And then the last thing you've got here is reset. So that resets the brush if you've messed around with the settings. So you shouldn't really need a reset because we're only going to ever mess with the, um, the, the clone of the brush. So let's make a clone of this one. So bear in mind, this is clay. So I'm going to tap on clay and I'm going to hit clone. I'm going to give it a new name. I'm going to call this one Scales. In fact, I'm going to call it, before I do that, I'm going to call it SGFX. That's my company. Little line. And then we'll call it Clay Scales. And click OK. Now, here we go. We've got our little clay brush. This is our brand new brush here with all those same settings there. Obviously, there's a rename now there because you, you can now rename your own brush. You couldn't rename the, the, the default ones. So what do we need to do to make that special? So it's a clay brush. We know it's a clay brush. If I draw on the, on the, the, the model, it's going to be like that. So that's fine. We know exactly what we're dealing with. It is a clay brush and it models and, 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 it, and it sculpts on the surface like that. But we want to make it a scale. So if we're going to make it a scale brush, then we, we've got a couple of decisions to make. So do we want to draw on the surface with this? Or do we want to make it so it drags out on the surface? If we do, then we come up here to stroke, do lock and radius, and that means now we can drag on the surface. So just get rid of that pin so it goes away. And you can see there, anything we, we work with now just drags onto the surface. I've got symmetry on there, actually. I didn't notice that, so I'll turn that off. So we'll go back now. So we've now, we're already well on the way. So we'll tap on here. And we now need uh, an alpha. Now I've got thousands of alphas in here. There's tons of these in our resource hub. You can you can go and get them for free. Just look at the details in the description down below. We're adding stuff to these all the time. Um, I'm going to use this one, which is a scale that I've drawn, and then I'm just going to drag it on the surface and see what I get. So there you go. I'm getting a nice scale pattern. So it's not very deep, and it's it's working quite well. Um, so I can just keep adding scales. 
and that's that's how my brush is now going to work um, and you can obviously make different alphas for the scales to randomize them a little bit or you can just work with that um, and that works really well now, there's a couple of things you might want to do two finger tap and go back so i want to change some settings on this so i'm going to go up back up here to our um, stroke menu and then to we'll go over to our fall off and i want to make it a little bit more harsh so i'm going to tap on spline add a point move it up to the top corner and that gives us a much more of a, of a better fill you can see watch this bit here as i'm as i'm bringing it down it gives you like a, a nice gradient if you want that now i don't want a gradient I want to just use it exactly like that, and that gives me a harsher, you know, more aggressive fill like, uh, or scale. Take the intensity up, take the radius up, and we've got our scales how we want them. Don't forget, you can do negative, so you could put sub on, and you could go indent them like that. Now, obviously, we don't want that for scales, so that's not something that we want. So, all good so far. So, we've now got a brush that whenever we're on it, we pull it open, and it gives us our... Um, scales now if you reset now if you if you basically just um, reset nomad now when you come back that brush will be there but it will lose all its settings so what you have to do is make sure you save it at this point do you want to confirm the save yes and there we go and now what will happen is when I reboot that is now set so let's just do that and I'll show you exactly what I mean so I'm just going to do a hard reset very quickly Okay, here we are back, exactly the same scene. And what you can see now is it's popped back in with that brush that we made. And it's named SGFX Clay Scales. Now, when you use it, it's retained all of those settings. So it's actually retained the uh, settings I put up here as well. So it's calling lock and radius. If you look up here and you look in your um, fall off, it's retaining my fall off. So it's made you... A, a, an instant brush that respects all of the things that, that you had before and it's also giving you that alpha as well it's, it's giving you that alpha in the brush as well so it's it's basically a um a, a very very easy way to make almost macros of your own brushes now there's one thing that i want to say at this point is i now need to call uh, I, need, I need to um give this um brush a an icon so I use these little orange icons, but you literally can use anything you want. You can make it anything you want. So I'll show you how I make them, and it's and it's super, super simple and old school. So I just go my colour, which is FF9900, and that's the orange that we use for the company. We're going to go metalness down and roughness down as well, and we're going to force paint that. And I'm just going to change my HDRI to something that I like. So we'll brighten up the HDRI. And we will change it to a nice sky. So let's find one that I like. I think that one might be one that I like. And we'll just spin it around three fingers just until we get it looking how I like it. Um, something like that maybe. And then that gives us this sphere. So you can basically now just export that as a PNG. So you basically come up here and you look for your export and you want to export or render with a transparent background and I want it to be a PNG and I'll just do it as a 1080 um, and in fact no I won't I'll do 4k for now and I'll do export PNG and it'll say go out like so and then it gives you that now look there I cropped mine a little bit so I'm going to do mine a little bit differently then I'm going to zoom in a little bit I'm going to make sure there's no crop and then I'm going to export the PNG again and there you go, you've got your sphere with a transparent background. So that's that done and saved in my photo album. So let's switch to Procreate. And here's what I've done in Procreate. So I'll redo it for you to show you exactly what I've done. So I've gone plus and I'll make a, a new one. So I will do new canvas and I'll give it a width of 1024 by 1024. Create that. And I've got a little square that I can use. I'm going to turn that background off. So I'm going to go to add, insert a photo, find my orange that I've just done and then select it and import it. And that basically brings in that transparent background orange sphere. I'm going to bring it up, put it in the center, roughly in the center. If you can't, it's hard to judge that. So I can put the background back on for now. 
that gives me my little icon. You can do anything you want here. This is just simply one way to do it. I'm going to go add, and I'm going to do add text. We'll call it, um, let's call it, um, I'll give it a font first of all. So I want to use impact something big and chunky. And then I'll go call it um, clay brush one. And you literally can do, as I say, anything you want here. This isn't, you know, this, this bit is kind of irrelevant in a way. So that's named that brush. You can even use a photo of the type of brush that it is. You, you know, we'll do that towards the end. Turn off the background, export this now. So we'll do share, save PNG, save the image. Back to our Nomad, and in Nomad, we will say up to our brushes, tap on the brush we've just made, and we can just do icon, photos, pick the CB1, add it, and there you go. There's your icon there, CB1. So that works absolutely fine. With PNGs is the best because of the transparent background. And you can then basically make anything you, you, you know, your icons can be anything you want that goes in as, as an image. So that's basically the process. So that is all you need, really. If you don't want to go any further with this video, that would do it. But that's only using clay. And you can make brushes with anything. So let me give you another one, a good one that I like to do. So um, one that I like is crease. So tap on crease. We'll use a clone. We'll call this one, again, I'm just using my own naming convention here. Um, and it is, if you're going to do thousands of these, it's, you know, hundreds of these, it's useful to get, you know, de develop your own naming convention so that you can basically, so you can search them and find them. Um, so it's SGFX. I'm going to call this one, I just called it Crease, didn't I? And we'll call this one Stitch. Okay, so with this one, what I'm going to do, let me just get rid of this uh, shiny. I don't think it, it helps while we're while I'm showing you the sculpting. So with this one here, I'm going to change the setting. So we know it's crease, so it's it's crease brush like that, but we're going to give it an alpha. So I've got quite a few alphas that I've made here. So one of them is this cross here. here. If you just go over to Procreate, you can see this one here. So this is just a black background. A uh, couple of circles in the corner with light um, um, uh, rings in the corner here, and then I've got a lighter one and a and a, a, a even lighter one to strap over the top. Export that as your alpha, and then back to Nomad. So that's now been imported into here. So now when we do our crease, we get that, and it doesn't really help us at all. You can't see anything. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really show on the surface. So we know we've got to change that. So let's change this stroke spacing and see what happens. So I'm going to crank it right up and see what I get. So we'll bring it around here and there you go. You're getting some sort of a, a followed stitching pattern. That's It's not quite right yet, but it's, it's getting there. So come back again, lower the intensity. Let's try something different with the stroke. Let's go and um, bring this to tap it, another one, and make it black and we'll make it go all the way to the corner so there's no fall off at all now. And then we'll come back onto the screen and we'll, let's just check that we've got enough resolution. I can't remember what our resolution was, whether it was high enough. I'll just subdivide it again. And what I will do is just put a little bit of roughness in so you might be able to see it a tiny bit better as I sculpt. And then we'll try again and see what we've got. And now you can see you're starting to get a stitch pattern. If I now do a sub, undo, and see what this does, you can see there you've got a really nice stitch pattern. So this can be stitching on clothing, this can be, you could change this for scarring, you could change this for uh, all kinds of all kinds of things. Now it's still not quite right there, is it? So we're gonna increase that to say 100% or ish and see what we get, and there you go, there's stitching. So all of the magic is in these settings. All you have to do is slowly work through and see what you want to do. So for example, you could add lazy rope stabilizer. That'll make your strokes much, much smoother. So if you're going to, uh, you know, if you're deaf, if you're going to make things like um, piping for the edge of furniture or for clothing or anything like that, 
doing it like this might be, you know, with a little bit of rope stabilizer might just improve things for you. And also you've got all of these settings here like radius and intensity. So you might want to go really aggressive with it or you might want to go the opposite way and go aggressive. Uh, and it's totally up to you. Now, one thing you can do is go really big on the brush and then you can just do a quick draw across the surface like this. And you could make that into your icon if that's the kind of thing that you, you, you want. You could make your own icons and you could make them look something like that. And you could use that as your icon because it shows the stitching a little bit better. Um, so the world really is your oyster here. You can do anything you want now you know that there's all of these different techniques. And the, and the, and the, the way to get creative with this is to literally go through each brush and think to yourself, right, what's the core properties of the brush? So brush itself is a good one because it's I don't use that for sculpting. So it, it, it gives us a nice blobby effect uh, by default. So, as, you know, rather than the clay brush, which gives us a flattened effect for things like muscle. So brush is quite good to do. I've never made one with move, so I'd be interested to see if you could do one with move. Crease I do a lot. Um, another one that I tend to do a lot with is pinch. I've made a few brushes with pinch in the past. And then you can also do a lot, a really, really large amount with stamp because stamp is the way that we um, uh, really stamp shapes into the surface. So because I do a lot of creatures and dinosaurs, you'll see me doing a lot of things like this. So a lot of scales for toes and, and things like that. Um, so I've made over over time, I've made quite a lot of these kind of brushes that are useful for creature designers and creature creators. So I make scale number one, two, three, four, five, you know, tons and tons and tons of these. Um, and, and they become a really big part of my of my um, process when I'm when I'm working that, you know, they are a, a really important um integral part of my process look how aggressive that one is so it would be nicer to have that with a much much lower intensity so if you were going to create that brush you'd work on that intensity so here's my main tips for creating brushes so number one pick the right brush in the first place number two name it in a way that you can locate it and keep it in a pack number three make sure you set your alpha number four make sure you set your stroke type and number five, then set your spacing. Number six is create an icon and save it. So that's pretty much how you can make your own custom brushes. Now, when you've saved it, if you switch over to just the file browser, go into Nomad and then have a look down here. And in the tools, you'll see all of the different brushes that we've just created. So as you can see for this session, I've created SGFX crease dot JSON and uh, SGFX clay scales dot JSON. So if you buy a pack off anyone or if you want to sell a pack, you're basically presenting them with these files here. So you zip them up and then would be better if you're doing it for someone to give them a little um, reminder that that's where you put them. So you drop those into your tools in there inside of Nomad. And that's it. So go make some Nomad brushes, start sharing them, start selling them, start using them in your own projects. I, the way I do this, I don't sell any brushes. I give all mine away. They're all in our resource hub. Um, when I make anything, I give it away in the resource hub. Um, and I, I also do like to uh, go on the Nomad groups and help out and share where, where, wherever I can. So I'd encourage you to do that on Facebook um, and just share, or even on the Nomad group itself, um, and just share what you make. I hope you're enjoying these videos. And if you are, please give us a thumbs up because it does help us to get in front of other people who like this kind of content. And if you like this kind of content, then please subscribe to the channel and we'll let you know when we release new content, whether it's Nomad or any other creative software.